Hi, I'm Andres and this is Androtics, a channel for creating robotics and AI projects. In the last video I created the design of Pavlov, my future quadruple robot, and I ordered some components to start the project. Since I haven't received the components yet, in this video I'm going to explain the robot model, giving some ideas about the quadruple movement. I'm just going to give a graphic idea, so I'm not going through the maths behind. Ok, first of all we need to know what is a frame of reference and what is a transformation. A frame of reference is a coordinate system where we can locate and orientate any object. So we have the three dimensions in the space, X, Y and Zeta. Now we can add a cube. We define a transform as the combination of the position and orientation of the object respect to the frame of reference. I can move and rotate the cube and the transform will change. We can have one or more different frames. The second frame has a transform respect to the other, so I can move it and rotate it as well. Let's add another cube. This cube has a different transform depending on the frame we are looking at. Both transforms change when I move the cube. Ok, now we can create the model of the robot. A robot model contains basically two types of elements, links and joints. A link is a fixed element of the robot, while a joint connects two links, being able to move and rotate. In our particular case, each paw has three joints. These joints are rotational, which means that they can only rotate around one axis. Therefore we have three joints in each paw, so it's a total of 12 joints for the quadruple robot. I've built a robot model in ROS using a URDF file. Let's visualize the model. Each joint is represented by a frame of reference. So when I move a joint, the transform changes respect to the previous frame. Now we need to define the kinematics of the robot. Robot kinematics is the application of geometry to study the movement of robotic systems. Basically, we have two types of kinematics, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. Let's start with forward kinematics. What we do to move the paw is to rotate these joints. By rotating them, the position of the end effector of the paw, in this case the feet, changes in the 3D space. How do we compute where the feet is when we move the joints? In this case, it's really simple using geometry. With these equations, we can get the position of the feet from the joint angles. And this is forward kinematics. The idea behind is that the motors will move the joints in the same way as I move these sliders. By commanding a motor to rotate a joint, we are changing the position of the feet. And I want to know where the robot is walking on. Simple, right? We have the joint angles and we compute the fit position. What about the other type, inverse kinematics? Inverse kinematics is the opposite idea than forward kinematics. We have the fit position and we want to compute the joint angles. This is really useful because I want to worry about the position of the fit when the robot is walking, not the joint angles. In fact, when you move your arm, you want to move your hand to a certain position. You don't have to worry about how much you have to rotate the shoulder, the elbow or the wrist. It is the same here. And how do we compute the joint angles from the fit position? Using geometry again. This time a little bit complex using the cosine law. So we have the fit position and we compute the joint angles. The idea is really simple as you can see. Let's see an application of the inverse kinematics. Now I want to modify the pose of the robot. How can I move the torso without moving the paws? I fix each fit to the initial position and I use the inverse kinematics to compute the joint angles when I move the torso. In this way I get to change the pose of the robot, being able to move it and rotate it. This will be very useful for the walking algorithm, since I am able to change the center of gravity.
Ok, let's make it work. I developed a simple algorithm to see how the robot will work. I'm not taking into account the gravity and the stability, so the robot cannot fall down in this simulation. The algorithm consists in moving each point the following way. The feet follows a semi-circumference, and then the torso moves forward a distance that is the same as the diameter of the semi-circumference, keeping the feet in the previous position. Alternating this for each point, we have a really simple walking algorithm. This is how it looks like. But the thing is that I can set different torso poses, and the walking algorithm still works. I could create a more complex model of the robot, adding mass and inertia to each link of the robot in order to make simulations. My model is really simple, and it's meant to give an idea about the robot kinematics. What I want is to develop a more complex working algorithm, taking into account the stability of the robot. This will be done with an inertial measurement unit in future videos. Ok, this is the end of this video. I hope you like it and subscribe for more updates in this project. See you next time! Bye!